Hello and welcome to Simple French Cooking. My name is Francois. Today I want to teach you how to make a delicious warm chocolate tart. I started cooking when I was very young, literally when I was hanging off of my mother's apron strings. My mother was an incredible cook. She had a bold and fearless style inspired by what she found at the market that day. She cooked like great jazz musicians improvise. She taught me a simple and unpretentious homestyle cuisine that formed the basis of my style when I became a professional chef. I went to cooking school and graduated top of my class. Over the next 30 years, I worked in several highly acclaimed kitchens across the country. I've written two cookbooks, including the most recent called French Cooking for Beginners with 75 recipes geared towards starting cooks. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make an all-purpose sweet tart dough, and I'm gonna make it in a food processor. When making sweet pastry dough in your food processor, I like to use the steel blade. Now, I know some food processors come with the plastic dough blade, but I still find this one works best. So make sure you have it inside. You wanna make sure your vanilla bean that you're using is soft and not dried out, and also that it's kind of plump and full of vanilla seeds. And the way to get the vanilla seeds out is you take a paring knife, and we're just gonna cut the vanilla bean lengthwise in half. And then just open up the half each half, I should say. Take the edge of your knife and just scrape along there and you're gonna get all of that just beautiful vanilla seeds. Now we're gonna put that into our food processor and then let's scrape the other side. And then make sure you save this pod for when you're making your custard sauce later on in the recipe. All right. To the vanilla beans, we're gonna add four tablespoons of butter. And I just like to make sure that the seeds get knocked down. You wanna make sure that they're in there. All right, then let's just process this together. All right, now let's just make sure you take a spatula and wipe down the sides. You don't wanna miss any of these vanilla beans. Okay, and once that's well mixed, we're going to add half a cup of powdered sugar. And then also two large egg yolks. All right, and then let's mix this up well. Then it, let's add a pinch of salt. I know some people think it's weird adding salt to a pastry, but just the smallest amount can improve your pastry quite a bit. Then we're gonna add one cup of all-purpose flour. And it, you know, it's okay if the flour's overflowing. We'll, if it's too dry, we'll adjust it. All right, and then just Mix this till it comes together. Now you might have to stop part way through and scrape it down again because the butter likes to stay stuck on the sides. All right. And when you're mixing it, just go inside and give it a little squeeze and see if the, the dough will come together. If it comes together like this is, then you're perfect. If it feels still a little crummy and dry, you can add like a teaspoon or two of water and that'll help the dough come together. All right, let's just turn this dough out onto our counter. We're just gonna mix it by hand, get it together in a ball. All right. 
That's beautiful. Look at that. It's important to let the dough rest for at least half an hour, but even an hour or two, or even overnight. Uh, what happens when you work a flour dough is it starts to create gluten, and gluten gets stronger and stronger. It's a little bit like working out when your muscles get very tense and you need to relax afterwards to soften it. So it's the same with pastries. By letting the glutens relax, when you eat the tart, the, the crust will be a little bit more delicate. And that's what we're looking for. Nobody likes to break a tooth on the crust. So I'm just gonna wrap this dough in a Ziploc bag, put it in my fridge, and we'll move on to the next step. Now comes the fun part to roll out your dough. So for the sweet tart dough, we're just gonna use a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick. I like to just sprinkle it on like that. Take your rolling pin and, it, you know, if you don't have a rolling pin, use a wine bottle, it also works. You just need something that's hard and cylinder shaped. Obviously a rolling pin is the best choice. It just pound the dough a little bit. And this just makes it a little bit more malleable, more soft and easy to roll. All right. And once you've taken your aggressions out just a bit, let's just start rolling. And I like to spin it around, you know, just to get it really nice and even. We're looking to roll it out to about eighth of an inch. And also don't, don't worry if the edges here are cracked um, because this dough, the wonderful thing about this dough is you can pinch it together and it'll stay together. All right. Look at that, that's perfect. The next consideration is what kind of tart pan you wanna bake this in. You could use a standard round nine, nine and a half inch tart pan like this and obviously just make sure it has the removable bottom. It makes it so much easier to get the tart out. But since I'm making this for Valentine's Day for my wife, I'm gonna use this beautiful heart-shaped um, tart pan. Um, I think this will be awesome. So whichever one you choose, doesn't matter. The steps are the same. All right, so let's take our rolling pin and then just very carefully, let's roll the dough up around the pin. And you just wanna make sure you're grabbing all the little pieces on the side because you don't want it to fall apart. All right, so now you have it rolled up on your pin. Put your tart pan inside. And in this case, I'm going to be having the top of the heart facing me, the widest part rather than the point. And now we're going to start unrolling this just over the top. You want to make sure that you have enough tart dough hanging over the side. You know, the best is about half an inch. And so we're just going to Take this dough and just work it into here. Just lifting it gently and pushing it into the corners. This dough is a little bit fragile. If you see like this piece broke off here and that's not a big deal, don't worry because I'm gonna show you how you fix that. All right, so when you've got your dough mostly in, you just wanna make sure you press the dough into the corners because you want that lovely kind of uh, scallop shape to the edge of your tart. All right. And then with whatever is hanging over, we're just gonna pinch it like this. So I'm gonna show you a really cool trick that I learned. I, I don't use baking beans. A lot of people put weights and stuff when they blind bake their tarts to help hold the shape but I'm gonna show you a trick I learned, uh, mostly because I'm lazy, um, that actually to me works better. All right. And now like on this side, where you have like 
the dough cracked off, I'm just gonna take another piece of dough and just, you know, rolled out the same thickness. And just kind of press it in there. You know, it kind of patches it. It's just really easy to do. All right. And I know some of you at home are like looking at this and going, God, that looks like pretty messy on the edges. That's gonna look like crap when it's done. I promise you, I'm gonna show you a trick. All right, now we're gonna take our dough and put it back in the refrigerator for another half an hour before we bake it. So whichever tart you've opted to make, the chocolate filling is exactly the same. And let me show you how to make that. So we're gonna start with one cup of heavy cream and then half a cup of milk. And we're gonna bring this to a boil. In a bowl, put 10 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips, and then just slowly pour your boiling milk and cream mixture over. And just pour in some, and you just wanna keep stirring when what we're looking to do is just melt the chocolate. Just take time. Once it starts melting, it's easier to stir and you won't splatter it all over the place. I like to use a wooden spoon to stir this because um, I don't want to introduce any air bubbles. If I was using a wire whisk, you might get some air bubbles. And then when you go to bake your tart, you'll end up with little teeny bubbles in it and it won't look as pretty. All right, and if you see, this is pretty well mixed now. There's still lumps, so let's just pour in the rest of the milk here, and that'll melt the rest of them. All right, this is looking great. <clears throat> perfectly smooth. It's looking beautiful. So once the chocolate and the milk are thoroughly combined, let's add two whole eggs, and I use large eggs. And then when you stir those in, they're just gonna thicken the chocolate up. Don't be alarmed, that's what's supposed to happen. All right, and that's it, that's your chocolate filling. All right, and now we're going to bake our tart shell blindly in a 350 degree preheated oven. Now, you might ask, what is baking a tart shell blindly? What that means is you don't have the filling inside. And the reason you do this is because you wanna cook the bottom of the pastry. I mean, have you ever made a tart or a pie? You put the filling in, you baked it, and the bottom of the pie was still raw dough? Nobody likes to eat that, it, it's terrible. Um, so baking it blind allows you to kind of get a jump start on cooking the tart shell. Let's pop this in our oven for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it's lightly brown. Ah, uh, look at this beautiful tart shell. So you see how it's lightly golden brown on the edges? Now let's pour our chocolate filling in here and then we're gonna continue baking it at 350 degrees for another 20 minutes. You'll know it's done when the center is firm but still jiggly, almost like jello. All right, let's check on our tart. Oh, that is so beautiful. Look at that. You see how shiny it is? And uh, it's just said if you jiggle it, it's just set kind of like jello. So that is perfect. Now, here's my trick for making, taking the crust off and making the edges nice. After it's cooked and before it cools, just take a, your same rolling pin and run it over the top of your tart and you just wanna wipe off any crumbs because you don't want those on top of your beautiful chocolate tart. And look at that. The dough just comes off perfectly. You have perfect edges. So that's the trick. 
you don't have to bake blind using beans. That's a myth. This is the easier way. Anyways, let's move on to the next step. I just wanted to show you how you can see when your tart is done. And if you just kind of look, you see it's just jiggling a little bit. And if you've cooked it low enough, you're not going to have any um, cracks in it. The top is going to be super shiny and just gorgeous. I mean, take a look at this. This looks epic. All right, so I want to show you a really cool trick that I learned when I was a chef to get your tart out of the tart pan easily. So put like a cup or a jar, anything um, cylinder shaped like this on your board or wherever, and then just put your tart on top. And there you go. Look how easy that was. Isn't that great? And just look at how beautiful this tart is. I was thinking for the heart-shaped chocolate tart for Valentine's Day that it would be cool to put a raspberry heart in the center of the tart. So let's do that. It's really easy. Just arrange the raspberries in a heart shape. They're just super simple. Do what, you know, do whatever makes you feel good. All right, let's take a look at that. Let's just put a couple more. Mm. I kind of like the raspberries in a way better than the caramelized bananas, only because it's such a rich dessert and the fresh fruit kind of just contrast the uh, sweet flavors and the rich flavors of the chocolate really really well all right there you have it two really cool and easy ways to garnish it if you want so thank you so much for watching my class i hope you enjoyed this incredible recipe for this warm chocolate tart um, you know, when you make this, please hashtag us at simplefrenchcooking.com. The hashtag is right here, there, here. I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell where it's at. Um, also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do weekly uh, video recipes there, and that's uh, right here as well. There will be a link somewhere in the description of this video. Uh, it's called Peace to and Pastis. Anyways, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You have a wonderful day and keep on cooking.